what should we be doing as providers? We should be standardizing our delivery. We should be measuring outcome. We should be building value because companies like Cairo One are looking in their expansion plans to acquire great chiropractic offices. Hello, Smart Chiropractors. Welcome to the Smart Chiropractor Show. In our featured guest segment, I'm Dr. Jeff Langmaid here with my co-host, Dr. Jason Deitch. Today, we have the opportunity to sit down and chat with the founder and CEO of Cairo One, Dr. Stu Bernstein. Cairo One is one of the largest chiropractic practices on planet Earth. We're talking over 130 practices, valuation close to half a billion dollars. We're going to talk about that as well as some of the interesting research they've been doing internally how it can apply to your practice. Stu, thanks for taking time and chatting with us today. My pleasure. Super excited to share some uh, great research. Well, it is our pleasure and we are excited to dive into it. I'm going to pick it up right there. Clearly, when you have a business and practice the size and scale of what you do, data becomes very important. What stimulated the early thought for doing market research and consumer research? Where did the process start? Yeah. So historically, as a company, we've uh, moneyballed our practices. So we look at every KPI that we could measure. We've got uh, smart dashboards for our providers, for our uh, teams. You know, we have over, I think, 150 to 160 chiropractors that are striving to deliver gold standard care. And so from measuring outcomes to measuring how patient uh, satisfaction is, net promoter scores, we measure it all. And so this past year, we made a pretty steep investment in looking at how the consumer looks at chiropractic, the chiropractic industry, and where we kind of fit in and where we're going. So we spent nearly $750,000 in doing market research. And so I only throw that number out, not to impress people, but really to impress upon people how much value we think there is in understanding our consumer. And so we, we have investors, private equity investors that have looked at us and have made investments at us. And they see chiropractic as a consumer driven model. <clears throat> For sure, it's healthcare, but they really are looking at it as a consumer service and or consumer products. I'm going to talk about kind of the product portion of it also because the research is fascinating. So I'm, I'm going to page through some of the results and you could pepper me with questions along the way. We did two different studies and the one that I'm uh, going to spend most of the time on is um, really consumer facing versus industry facing. Most of us know the chiropractic industry is a 15 to $19 billion industry. It's growing at two to 3% per year um, and has been, and you know, been practicing for 30 years. And I've said, I think every single year, it's never been a better time to be a chiropractor. And I think that's true today. Based on what, how consumers are looking at us, it's never been a better time. So. We looked at about a thousand respondents that were surveyed. And if you look at your favorite news channel and when they throw polls out, you'll see that most of those polls are around an end of a thousand and that becomes statistically significant. So we pulled about a uh, thousand respondents and then it was broken down about 435 were chiropractic users, 160 were former users or, or what the company called lapsed users. That's over 50% combined. That's astonishing. Right. And then 400 were consumers that never used chiropractic care. And some of what I'm going to share with you, even the people that have never used chiropractic care are turned down to chiropractic. Like they have a positive view of chiropractic. Some of the interesting things we, we asked, what's your comfort level in using chiropractic? Comfort levels are highest with chiropractic over massage, acupuncture, and other modalities. 52% had a highly positive, positive, or neutral view of what chiropractic is 
and its perceived effectiveness. Actually, the perception of the effectiveness of chiropractic by the consumer has increased over the last three years oh, by four percentage points. There was a question around offering adjacent services, and the consumer values adjacent service offering. So physical therapy, massage, acupuncture, nutrition. And interestingly enough, the lowest perception was on physical therapy. They actually had more, uh, an increased impact on the perception for other services. Can't tell you the exact reason why, but that's what the research showed. There was a portion called key purchase criteria or KPCs. Why did the consumer purchased a product. What were they considering? The very first two were distance, so locality to the location of the clinic, and then pricing. And so we do have to be very conscious about creating value in exchange for what we're charging. And so they didn't say they were bargain shopping. They said they were price conscious and value conscious. After that, it was the treatment, so once they began care, they were no longer, pricing wasn't the number one thing that they were looking at. They were looking at bedside manner. Are you connecting with your patients and how important it is to stay connected? Because once they vote to start care and they find the value, they want to be connected to their provider. And so some of what you're doing, I got to read the book that you guys just put out. And it's what you, you know, are saying, you've got to stay connected to your consumer. This was also very interesting. Customers are most likely to discover their chiropractor through word of mouth. And so again, building that tribe, family and friends. Um, the other thing that was very interesting is there's an increase in physician to physician referral and that a large percentage of patients, over 30% of their patients, found their chiropractor from a physician. Very interesting. Pretty cool, right? That is not intuitive to what we thought. The other thing that I also thought in and around consumer perception was net promoter scores. A net promoter score, the basic question is, on a scale of one to 10, how likely would you be to refer a friend or family? Ready? Chiropractors had a net promoter score 39% over other modalities, beats out physical therapy, massage therapy, acupuncture, uh, orthopedic, neurology. Our net promoter score is super high. And I think in part because we connect and we touch our patients, right? We're with them physically. Some other highlights, right? So who is our consumer? Chiropractic, massage, and acupuncture all skew towards younger, higher income, and more educated than the general population. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that our patients, are their incomes are higher and they're higher educated, right? The average household income of the current chiropractic patient is around $80,000, and that exceeds the average PT patient by $5,000 household income. As I said, chiropractic patients are slightly more educated, 55% have college degrees where the general population is about 50%. Among the general U.S. population, and I know this figure has been thrown around all over our profession and nobody knows where the number has come from, we have validated the number. Among the general U.S. population, 12% of consumers have used a chiropractor in the past year. So we have validated what our depth of penetration into the market is. Guess what? It's not that much lower than physical therapy. 17% of the population has used a physical therapist in the last year. So we're pushing right up there to utilization. Comfort level, consumers' comfort levels are highest with chiropractic as compared to massage, acupuncture, orthopedist, osteopaths, and physiatrists. Why? Because the consumer is looking for a non-drug approach to uh, their healthcare concerns. Perceived effectiveness. Consumers perceived 
chiropractic to be more effective than most other modalities, osteopath, physiatry, orthopedist, acupuncture, and on par with physical therapy. This, this is what I, I thought was interesting. Over the past three years, the consumer's perception of chiropractic being effective has risen by four percentage points. Again, don't know what's driving that, but they're finding that the, at least their perception. This one I thought was fascinating, right? Within chiropractic, the perceived net effectiveness has increased materially within current users by 5%, but wait, perceived effectiveness by non-users increased by 7%. So the only assumption I could make is our patients are going out and sharing their stories with friends and family and sharing the positive experience and the effectiveness of our care with non-users. And so their perception is increasing along with users. And that's super exciting. Like we're not fighting the tide. When we first started practicing, we're not fighting a negative perception. The perception in and around the cure we provide is overwhelmingly positive. I talked about offering that it, we're not just a consumer service, but also a consumer product, they they found that it was attractive to patients when additional services and or products were offered. So they have a, a trusted resource and they like having a trusted resource that they feel confident that if you're selling a service or a product, they could trust that too. So if you have that in your practice, or you're looking for additional streams of income and or services, your consumer wants it. They're going somewhere for it. Just gonna hit a couple more highlights and then welcome to take some uh, questions. What health considerations led you to consider chiropractic treatment? Every chiropractor is gonna love this, right? So the first and foremost was chronic pain, 54%. The third, 24% was due to an injury, but the third was the general desire to improve well-being. So there's a portion of the consumer, it's the third in line to why they considered going to a chiropractor. Our message is getting across to the consumer. Fascinating. I talked about consumers are most likely to discover their chiropractor through word of mouth, family and friends. And then the number two way was the question was, how did you initially find your chiropractor? The number two was, my doctor referred me. All the way down at the bottom, interesting, was digital marketing. Interesting. Digital marketing, not online presence. Online research was number three. So where they're researching chiropractic and then probably going to chiropractor near me based on locale. That's assuming they didn't get it from their friends or family connecting on social. These days, a referral from a friend or family is social networks. Right, which, which is different than digital advertising. advertising. Discount advertising. Yeah, that is actually one of the points I'm going to skip to since you brought it up. This is the question. Please rank the following options based on how interested you would be in receiving or purchasing them from your chiropractor. Rank from most to least interested. The number one, so they rate these six categories. The number one category of most interested in is free initial assessment, i.e. a posture assessment, x-ray, or an exam. We believe that it doesn't cheapen our services to offer that. You're actually decreasing the hurdle it takes for a patient to come into your office. That's counterintuitive to what we hear a lot of people saying from a stage is that it decreases your value. It cheapens your service. The consumer is saying they're highly attracted to that and discounted models. So they want to know that 
there's a way and a, a cost efficient way to get the care that they want. This is awesome. 71% of customers expect to continue receiving adjustments once they are placed on an out-of-pocket maintenance plan. So another piece of this, I know there's this long-term argument, and Jason, you and I have talked about cash versus insurance, and should you be an all-cash model or a blend? Um, I've done both. Currently, Cairo One is a blend of uh, insurance and cash. Um, we, the consumer wants to use whatever benefits they have at their fingertips. But what's really exciting about that is they understand that at some point their benefits will either be maxed out or not appropriate for the continued care, meaning insurance is designed for the acute or therapeutic portion of care, but they expect to continue care. And guess what? Pay for it out of pocket. 71%. That is exciting stuff. And so if there are doctors that are scared to ask, their patients, their consumers for money, they expect to pay for it. There's actually a shift in consumer attitude towards paying for wellness services. Wellness products, they're spending almost three to one on products versus services, but the service is increasing, meaning they're, they're buying things and stuff. They're buying braces and vitamins and products, wellness products at a three to one rate of services, but the, the, that's decreasing over time. This is interesting. So we then move to how um, patients are deciding when, when they do their research, how are they deciding and what, what's important to them once they leave reviews online? Because we believe that when patients are doing research, they're primarily looking at when they're deciding on a chiropractor, five stars versus three stars, right? Consumer sentiment online reviews is almost entirely driven by service-oriented traits, such as the quality of the staff and the chiropractor, rather than the physical or medicinal traits. Interesting. So let me un unwrap that. They are more connected to the doctor and the team than the outcome. Now, we, we have been measuring outcomes in our offices for 15 years, right? And I always laugh at, at some of the sentiment, doctors that don't know Cairo One and know what we're about, they always go, oh, you're, 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 not, you know, you're not outcome driven and you're not evidence based. And I always contend we're, we're actually probably more evidence-based than any other chiropractor out there only because of the amount of data that we're able to collect and the statistically significant amount of data. We've been measuring outcomes for 15 years. We measure it between providers to make sure our providers are you know, fighting for gold standard level of care. And so, you know, Outcomes are relatively easy to measure. Every chiropractor should be doing them in their office. Just an SF36, short form RAN36, it's measuring quality of life outcomes. We should be doing that and seeing the benefit that our patients are getting and what they're saying. You know, other than your Facebook ratings and your Google reviews, you should be measuring your clinical outcomes. It's so important for you to be able to communicate not only your patient satisfaction, but how they're responding clinically. Hey doc, do you have an email list of 300, 500 or more? If so, please connect with our team at thesmartchiropractor.com with Patient Pilot. We can activate that email list and start generating reactivations into your practice each and every week. To schedule a demo and learn more, head over to thesmartchiropractor.com. Again, that is thesmartchiropractor.com. But right now, we'll head back over into this awesome interview on interviews by The Smart Chiropractor. I know I just laid a ton of information out. I don't want to interrupt you. I mean, 
there's so many, there's so much good stuff there. I just want you to keep pouring it into us. But uh, but I will just for the sake of time, and, and maybe we'll do a part two if you're willing, Stu, and go into some more detail. But I just want to sort of reiterate a couple of things. One, uh, kudos to you and Sam and your team. You guys are playing this game at a level that most chiropractors aren't even thinking or dreaming about. Uh, investing $750,000 in research is more than most chiropractors make in a year themselves. Uh, and for you to have the viewpoint of, as a, we've said, 130 plus offices, $130 million plus a year, working with private equity and, and a whole nother level of healthcare than any other chiropractors in the profession. Noah, kudos to you for, for I guess, breaking that glass ceiling and going there. What does this research tell you and your company, how are you going to adapt to it? What is it going to change in the future? And what would chiro single practitioners or smaller groups, what, do you would, what would you recommend they do with this data, this information as well moving forward? Yeah, so a lot, lot of questions in that statement, right? Yep. So my job is as CEO, other than carrying the vision, which you spoke to a bit, like we started this company in order to transform our profession. And that was the vision from the beginning. And one of the major outcomes, we wanted to transform how chiropractors are viewed. We wanted to compress the learning curve for chiropractors. And by and large, I think we've achieved that. Um, we wanted chiropractors to be at the top of the wage ladder, not at the bottom. Our average chiropractor that's been with us over two years earns over $200,000 a year. And you guys know the average chiro is earning a little over a hundred thousand, right? And so we, as a company, wanted to take everything not chiropractic off their plate and support them in being phenomenal clinicians, right? And so I think by and large, we're achieving that. We've got lots of work to do, and but by and large, we're achieving it. My other job is to understand trends in the chiropractic industry and the greater overall health market and what I'm seeing. And because of this kind of research, what I'm seeing is investors are looking inside to chiropractic for a number of reasons. One, we're a highly fragmented industry, which is inviting to them that they could see, they kind of look at chiropractic as dentistry was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, Dentistry was highly fragmented. Less than 1% of the dental practices belong to an organization or a company driven like um, Aspen Dental, Smile Companies, um, Midwest Dental. These are uh, service organizations that have five, six, 700 clinics under their umbrella, right? Today, it's close to 30% of dental practices are part of a dental organization like that. In chiropractic, one to one and a half percent of practices in the country are under the umbrella of an organization like Align Life, The Joint, Cairo One, Myocore, less than 1%, 100% chiropractic of those practices fall under that. That's not gonna be for long. Money is plowing in from outside in because they are looking at the market research, at the consumer research, and they're saying, wow, here's a profession that is creating value and is highly profitable. And so to answer the last part of your question, what should we be doing as providers? We should be standardizing our delivery. We should be measuring outcome. We should be building value. Because companies like Cairo One are looking in their expansion plans to acquire great chiropractic offices. I think in the last 18 months, we've acquired over 35 practices, um, which was not part of our strategy originally. We used to open all practices from scratch. And then we saw a need that needed to be fulfilled that one, Chiropractors, by and large, want to practice chiropractic. We've been forced into being entrepreneurs. That's not the case anymore. You don't have to be an entrepreneur if that's not your strong set. And so a number of the practices that we've acquired and partnered with are chiropractors that are just tired of running 
a business and want to be great clinicians. The other portion is there's no exit strategy, right? Chiropractors by and large just fizzle on. They don't get the value for all their blood, sweat, and tears that they've put into it. And we've created an exit strategy where we're not buying practices at a discount. We're actually paying a high value for the practice because it's meaningful and valuable to us. And so we've created a long-term, or not a long-term, but a three to five-year exit strategy for chiropractors who may not be ready to retire, but they want to take chips off the table, get compensated for what they built, and then continue on as providers without the stress of running a practice and having built their nest egg. I think that's where we're going. It's not unlike PT, dentistry, podiatry. This isn't unique to chiropractic, but we're ripe for them. You're hitting a lot of the motivating factors of why we wrote the payday practice, everything from there will be a day that you need to generate revenue, not bending over a table and not in a physical practice. You're addressing that and, uh, and the consumer demand. Uh, you mentioned 14% are going. A third of people want it for wellness. That sounds like a big opportunity of people who, if they just knew <laughs> yeah. who to go to, what was possible, you made it available and so on. Uh, I know we only have a few minutes left, Stu, so I just want to make sure as you talk about and go down the road of acquiring practices, let's get real specific in that in the last few minutes. For those doctors that are listening that may be in that category that you're referring to, what type of practices are you looking to acquire? And if somebody is interested, what should they be doing in order to reach out to you? Yeah, I think there's two um, great opportunities, right? One is for chiropractors who um, want to be great clinicians that have been associates or um, are in a struggling practice um, and they're just done, right? And so we employ, like I said, 150 to 160 chiropractors. We've, we will hire this year about 85 to 90 chiropractors. Next year, our budget is 130 chiropractors. And this is not the typical associate beat down. We, we train our docs, we build them up, we pour into their success and we pay them in exchange for the value. Like I said, our average chiropractor is making a couple hundred thousand. That's average. Our top 5% are earning between five and $800,000 a year. Now, for sure, those, that's the top of the top, cream of the cream, cream of the creme. And how are they doing that? They're focused on practice. We're focused on running the business, driving new patients in. I think this last month, uh, you know, on average, we're driving around 3,200 patients into our practices every month. And guess what? 45%, 40 to 45% of those are referrals. So that's one opportunity. Um, you want to come and go into the pure employee model, or you have a practice that's thriving. Our average practice that we acquire is in the range of um, profit level between two and 400,000 on average. Um, and it's a good practice. It's not a great practice. And there's typically only two reasons. One is marketing is a challenge. They aren't certain on how to drive more throughput or more new patients in, and we've mastered that. The other is, um, they just don't quite know how to build the service offer. And so we could drive more, drive more patients and drive more value per patient. And so if we could take that over, the opportunity, so buy a practice, we're buying practices, right, for cash up front, and then we're giving a growth opportunity on us helping you grow the practice and putting dollars in your pocket along the way. And then it's a transition into being a clinician and getting paid really well to do what you love. So you get value for what you've built and then you're getting value for doing what you love. And you know, you could reach out to us on chiro1.com. There's a provider section on, on the website. You can reach out to me personally. We're super excited about contributing to the profession. 
you've known me a long time, Jason. Um, I've, I've told this story over and over again. And like I said, th this has never been a better time to be a chiropractor. And if that is not between your ears, <laughs> and that's the problem. It's not between your ears because outside everybody's pointing to us inside and they want what we have. They just need to tell a better story. I think that is powerful, Stu. We're up against the clock. Jock's listening and watching. We're going to drop those links down below. Stu, we're going to get a verbal confirmation for a part two. We have so much to dive into with you. <laughs> but Docs, connect with Cairo One, connect with Stu and his team. We'll drop those links down below. Stu, this is the easiest interview I've ever done. You did a great job. Thanks for coming on. Anything, no best and bad. I appreciate it. Again, you know, if I talk too much, I get excited about what we're doing. That's awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video on The Smart Chiropractor. To not miss a single thing that's clinically oriented, marketing oriented, or more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel today.